Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Um, this time we're looking at um, my new Sony PS3 Super Slim here. Now, this was purchased from uh, Music Magpie actually uh, via eBay. It's in pretty good condition, there's uh, barely a mark on it, really. Um, so, there's a few reasons behind purchasing it that way from a company like Music Magpie and also this particular model. Uh, now, there's lots of various models, as you're probably already aware. You know, this is my first PS3. Um, I have had PS3s to look at in the past to fix the stuff. Um, the sort of problems I've looked at is replacing, well, the only one I've looked at really was to replace the uh, laser and the optical drive. Here. Let's try and take this disc out without scratching it. Um, yeah, that's in excellent condition, Last of Us. That was the reason I got this, by the way. I've been wanting to play this for ages. I almost bought a PS4 last Christmas. I almost bought a PS4 this Christmas. But the price, it wasn't just quite right for me. I know it's, it's pretty good value, actually. You could buy a PS4 now for around £200-ish. Well, you could do when the, they had the Amazon Black Friday sale on. At the moment, it's probably set you back between £220, £240-ish for a PS4. Obviously, it's more expensive if you go for a Pro or something like that. Uh, I've not got any 4K displays. So getting back onto the reason why I went for a Super Slim, um, obviously, you know, as these things evolve, they start to be able to address some of the uh, design um, imperfections, if you like, you know, from the initial versions and things there. So the original chunky model, you know, there were, it was plagued much in the same way the Xbox was with the um, BJ problems, you know, yellow light of death, etc. Um, so, you know, temperature was a factor. You know, these things are run so fast these days. Um, most modern devices now use BGA devices for the just primarily because the number of connections you know you've got like 256 or more connections on some of those chips so you need uh, you know you've got such a high pin density you need to have them all on the underside of the chips and things and uh, in terms of manufacturing and assembly and stuff it's far easier for them to assemble using BGA but lead free solder and the temperature that those chips generate you know they get very hot so and with it's, it's not just about the heat but it's about the, the, the cycles cooling cycles going from cold to warm cold to warm cold to warm you know over weeks and months and stuff or uh, years in some cases um, eventually you know you get cracks fractures in the solder connections on BGA chips so that's one of the reasons I haven't gone for a PS3 uh, up until now space is another issue obviously you know that as things have got smaller but, you know this is easy to accommodate the size of this physically into my setup in the uh, the other room there um, so yeah the size is an issue but as things have evolved like I say they've got more reliable uh, now these models the, the super slim still suffer can still suffer from the yellow light of death but it's a lot less likely um, you'd think it would be more likely because of the size of the case but I think they've reduced you know the micron uh, size there of the chips that they've used has shrunk slightly you know and they've got better at handling the temperature issues and better at laying out the boards and things you know so uh, yeah that's why I wanted the super super slim um, you can firmware mod these, uh, that might be something I may do at some point in the future, I'm not in any rush to do it. And to be honest, uh, from the ethical point of view, I tend to stay away from sort of modding the current gen. Now PS3 obviously it's not, you know, PS4 is the current gen, but it's still a support system. So I'm kind of like, uh, do I really, should I really mod this? I don't think so, I might leave it for a year or two, it might be something to come back to, you know, in 12 months or 18 months, I may, may soft mod it and then start considering, you know, dumping some games and sticking some games on there. But, um, you know, and that is an important point to know. It's like I say, you know, my videos, you know, I use, um, I'm an advocate of flash carts and, you know, all these things that allow you to play ROMs and things. And I, I don't personally think, you know, obviously legally there's an issue with that. Personally, I don't think there's a problem with it when it's a system that's, you know, years old, that's no longer supported, where no one's got a financial investment, you know, an interest in that platform. You know, uh, things like the PS4 and the Xbox One, um, I would never um, go near hacking until, like I say, something's replaced them a year or two later or something. It's, you know, it's a system that's no longer sold. So as a side note there, coming back to the Xbox uh, 360, talking about BGA again, I went through, uh, I think the one, the one I've got now is my fifth Xbox 360. Now, I don't have the, um, I've got the, I think I got the Elite, yeah, I got the Elite model, but it's not the, the newest slimline Xbox, you know, the one that had the sort of uh, egg, you know, egg timer shaped curve to the front of it. It wasn't that one. I've still got the original Elite. It's a black uh, console. I think I've got a Gears of War face on it actually at the moment, but that's my fifth one. Under warranty, it was replaced uh, three times by the time it came to the fourth replacement. Or every time, you know, Red Ring of Death, you know, it was BGA related every single time. Um, what I decided to do was 
when it was fixed under warranty because it, and it was it literally every time it failed it was like literally a week or two weeks within the warranty period just about to you know elapse elap elap so the fourth time I sold it stuck it on eBay you know once it was repaired properly and went and bought the elites now I've not had a problem with that since but time will tell you know I suspect at some point I'll get to, you know the red ring of death or whatever it is on the 360 there again uh, and the other thing just to touch on talking about you know tying the two together there the 360 and talking about um, you know uh, piracy and things like that I'll admit that back in the day when the 360 was uh, they were trying to hack it the first uh, the first people were trying to actually get homebrew and stuff on there try and understand the drive mechanics one of the there was a forum thread actually and I was a member of the community there um, and did contribute uh, a little bit in terms of un trying to understand what they were trying to do is somebody dumped the ROM and I think it was an 85851 based uh, MCU that was used on the drive of the Xbox 360 and I was one of the people that was actually helping to understand that ROM and uh, I pointed out along with a few other people that it was obfuscated you know you've probably heard me say that word a few times now uh, but yeah that's that's just an interesting fact for you um, I had a very small involvement in understanding and deciphering what was going on there with the drive. Um, I did actually work out the obfuscation that was used. It was the, what they'd done, I think, the data bits were all mixed up and they were kind of like in a bit of a pseudo random order connected to the chip. Um, so anyway, that's my claim to infamy, <laughs> if you like. Beyond that, things got a lot more complicated because once they got past that stage, people obviously then started to reverse engineer that, that ROM. Um, and I think some of it was signed. Uh, so you couldn't just change all of it. I think you could change part of it, etc. But anyway, that's just a, a side note for you. Just something interesting, I guess. So I realise the main purpose of this video is for me to fix the controller, but it's a bit of a waffle as well, I guess, at the same time. We'll just show you, you know, a bit about this system while we're looking at it. So I've got USB ports there, uh, got some nice logos on the underside here that says you know, Blu-ray, DVD, Compact Disc, Dolby, Dolby Digital, DTS HD, is that it? DTS HD? Yeah, I think it is. Uh, Bluetooth HDMI. Um, the HDMI is uh, an interesting one. I've got a cable with this, came with this from Music Magpie some dust there, hair and stuff, um, to plug into the HDMI port, uh, sorry that's not the HDMI port, that's just the AV multi-out. Incidentally you can use a PS2 or a PS1 AV or RGB lead with that. So we've got optical um, audio out there as well, power supply built in. Um, that's one thing I don't like about this model, you know sometimes it's better to have the power supply separate. It's easier to replace, you've got less heat generated within the system but they're pretty efficient from what I understand. And, the worst case, you know, you could always just rip the lid off and try and fix the power supply or replace it entirely. Um, HDMI out, yeah, so the HDMI out, they sent me a cable and it was one of these where it looked okay unless you looked at it side on. In fact, I'll show you now. Yeah, so I connected up the HDMI, this cable that came with it, and it's a nice gold-plated one. Uh, but can you see, can you see what's going on there? See how it's pointing upwards a bit? It's had an impact or something, you know, it's been forced and I couldn't get HDMI out at all. I spent ages messing around trying to get HDMI out. I forgot how, uh, how you do it now. I think there's a way to force it back into composite. I think you hold down the, you switch it on and then hold down the power button until you hear it beep a number of times. Uh, it might just be once. I think all the guides I've read suggest you hold that button down until it beeps twice, but it never be beeped twice for me. But that was sufficient just doing that to get, you know, say PS2. Uh, RGB lead in here and uh, that worked and um, I was able to then at least see the system work and it was at that point like I say I noticed the, the cable here and uh, just ordered a replacement so yeah it's working I've been using this for the last few days I've been playing uh, The Last of Us uh, fantastic game this so far is that an eject button? yeah I don't know why you would have an eject button there when the tray does that just make that slide maybe? yeah it does so yeah, this was an early Christmas present to myself, we'll get onto the controller in a minute, but I thought, you know, it's a bit of a waffle anyway, I guess, probably my last video before Christmas, there might be one more yet, I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, so these are some of the games that I got for it, um, 
not all of them very good. The alien ones, uh, most people perhaps wouldn't like. But uh, yeah, I'm an aliens fan. I'll show you that in a sec. But The Last of Us, this was my main reason to get one of these. Um, and the, re the reason I was looking at um, the PS4 actually, because you can get the HD remastered version of this. So I may end up doing that at some point. I may either sell the PS3. I don't think so. I think I'll keep it. Uh, and, you know, and get a PS4 maybe next year at some point. But this game's fantastic actually. I've, I'm about four hours in. Um, just the introductory part where you play the, the main character's daughter actually and it, you know, it introduces you to the people and this backstory and everything and then, yeah I won't tell you what happens but it certainly brings tears to your eyes actually it's, it's very 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 well written um, the, the, the voiceovers for the characters and things are really really good actually and it's very emotional um, and it's, the graphics are just amazing it's no wonder this won so many game of the year type awards and things it's um, it's fantastic. So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back to that as soon as I've fixed this controller. So what else have we got? Uh, Alien Isolation. Now I've already got this on the uh, Xbox One. It's fantastic, it really is. Um, it's sort of got similarities in some ways to this in the stealth mechanics, you know, the whole stealth thing. It's, it's different, it is different, but <clears throat> there's a similarity there. Um, and the, the detail and the love that's going to this as well. So it's a, another fantastic game. If you're a fan of the Alien series, this is perhaps the best Alien game to date, actually. Um, and then Heavy Rain. I've heard lots of good things about this game over the years as well. So, yeah, I'll be getting into that at some point, perhaps when I've got uh, The Last of Us out of the way. And then a couple more Aliens games, like I say. I'm a bit of an Aliens fan. Um, these are not great games, they really aren't, but I've got fond memories of playing both both of these actually on the Xbox 360. Um, I did a similar thing actually with a PSP, I've not shown that, I got a PSP, funnily enough again from Music Magpie. Um, and I'll, I'll just come back to that subject as well actually. The other thing I forgot to mention when I was talking about reasons for buying this from M Music Magpie is because a lot of the time things are not tested, you know, you get people trying to sell systems where the laser's a bit weak or, you know, after an hour or so you get the yellow light of death, etc, etc. Whereas uh, I do know that Music Magpie at least um, do pretty thorough testing. They do, you know, put these on test, uh, you know, temperature tests, you know, for a period of time, you know, uh, Burning test is the word I was trying to look for. You know, leave a game on there, leave it connected up to a TV, leave it on for an hour or so, just running through, and then someone comes back and checks the controller, listens to sound, etc. So that was the reason for going that route. You know, uh, just buying one of these randomly off any old seller, certainly somebody who's not got 100%, you're probably going to get something where someone's had a heat gun to it, because that's the other common technique that people use to fix these. And I'm not an advocate of that at all. In fact, the exact opposite. It, it damn well destroys things and stuff. You start getting heat guns onto these things. You've got to do it properly. You need the, you need to basically, you know, use the right equipment to heat the underside of the board with like IR or something, and then you know set your temperature profile correctly with your hot air removal and remove the chip properly, reboil it with proper, you know, proper component, you know, proper solder and stuff there and reflow it properly. Um, just getting a hot air gun, you know, a, heat, a paint strip or whatever is, is never a good idea. Um, and it's interesting, I'll sidestep actually and talk about the reliability of these things. Yeah, the, they've got, no, they're notorious, you know, the, the, some of the models for the PS3 and certainly the Xbox are notorious for, for these BGA faults and things. And it just makes you wonder, where are we going to be in 20 years from now, to even 10, 5 or 10 years from now with the, the numbers of these? You know, you look on eBay now, you'll find huge job lots of dozens, you know, you could buy dozens at a time, like 12 Xbox 360s for £100 or something, you know. And they're all pretty much going to have the same issues, similar issues. Some of them will be... Um, fixable others perhaps not some of them banned from xbox live etc you know the unique id or whatever that's in there that's you know they've, they've been hacked and modified and stuff so it's like we've got into a, a realm of gaming where these things have become disposable in so many different ways you know they're going to be much harder to, to service and repair in years to come still people you know people, people still will be able to fix them I'm not suggesting that the technologies used there and you know people won't be able to have the right skills and tools and things to deal with they will but they're just so much harder to deal with you know you just look at the the way the processors work um, you know linked to the, the NAND flash you know you've got your you know, your, your program ROM, if you like, you know, your boot ROM on board there that contains your kernel and various other things and stuff. And a lot of the time, those, you know, those are protected, the signs, you've got AAS encryption, SHA, you know, keys and hashes and all this complicated stuff going on. But then also you've got 
you know, burnable fuses and things in, in, in some of the chips now, you know, in the CPUs and things, so that the CPU is locked to a particular kernel version of stuff. And yeah, you know, hacking techniques find ways around some of these things, but the point is it's just got so, so, so much more complicated, you know, from a support perspective from a you know we're, we're not in the same realm as we were where you know your Commodore 64 fails you can swap the CPU around well you try swapping a CPU around on a, a PS3 or an Xbox One you might be able to do it on the PS3 you might not have the same security insanity that you've got with like the Xbox 360 but I sus you know I suspect that it's just not you know it's not going to be anywhere near as easy as it has been in the past and the number of people with the, the skills and the techniques and the you know the tools and things to do proper repairs and things to these will uh, diminish as time goes on I think and you know a lot of these will just end up landfill they, they really are kind of unfortunately most modern technology has kind of you know gone down that disposable route so finally we get to the main part of this video actually the focus is going to be to fix this and can you see straight away see that stick it's like hardly self centered it's just so worn the, the mechanical spring sort of action inside it has just been hammered so much um, and while we're on the subject of these controllers actually I'll just talk a little bit about that as well the Xbox controller from my experience is far superior to to these I do like these controllers don't get me wrong there's some, they'll always hold a special place in my heart for how nice they are to use but what I don't like about th these are these triggers here just feel really spongy you know, you feel like you've got proper triggers on the Xbox 360 controller. These just feel a little bit flimsy. So that's one thing I don't like about those. And the other thing there is the click, the, you know, the click down actions there. Um, and it might vary depending on how warm they are, but it's like I find if you're running in a game, you're moving forward, like you try and click down, sometimes it's hard to get it to click down unless you are near to centre. Got my nails need cutting again, I've just realised. I'll do that following this video. Um, so yeah, the other thing, like I say, that Music Magpie have let me down with here, like, look at the state of that, look at all the dirt around there and stuff, look, it's absolutely filthy. Um, and the rubbers are, yeah, they're a bit worn, those, I think I'm going to swap the rubbers out, but primarily the, the sticks. Look at the dirt down there as well, it's horrendous. Um, but it does work, it works okay, but, uh, well, I say it works okay, the other problem is the start button. You've got to press this, like, incredibly hard to get it to, to register, so they didn't thoroughly test this controller, so, and, and like I said, the HDMI cable's broken, so that was two things they let me down, let me down on, but I did manage to negotiate a partial refund, actually, so that was enough to buy some caps here, and to buy two new, um, analog sticks there, so, We'll get the screws out of this. Uh, they just look like small Phillips type screws, I think. We've got one, two, three, might be one under there, I'm not sure. Four, five, I think it's just going to be the five screws. So we'll get it apart, uh, see if we can uh, swap the sticks out. So, yeah, just Phillips screws. So, just getting the last few screws out here. Uh, I have to apologise for the low number of videos I've done recently. Uh, and to apologise to my Patreon supporters as well, because I've not really provided any additional content or anything that I said I would do, and I will do at some point. I think what I'm probably going to do is give away the blue X, um, uh, Commodore 64 um, that you'll have seen in the previous videos and things. I actually did put that case, you know, put the board into case there. Is there a screw under there? I hope there isn't. I might have to pull that off. Um, but yeah, as soon as the keys arrive for that blue Commodore uh, 64, I will be giving away that entire system to my Patreon supporters at some point. Um, I've only got 10, I think 10, 12 supporters or 13 supporters at the moment. So if you're interested in winning that uh, Commodore 64, um, yeah, your support, support via Patreon would be much appreciated. I will give away some smaller things in the meantime, because uh, it could be a number of months yet before we get those keys for that, that blue Commodore 64. Well, that was a wee bit more difficult than I anticipated, actually. The uh, keys, you know, the buttons there came out, as you can see. Because once I got it there, like that, it was attached down here. And you can see, it's, you've got to unclip it. It's, like, clipped into a little thing there. So it can take a bit of manipulation to separate uh, those halves. We've got the battery there. We don't want that to fall off. How do these come out here? Yeah, you've got to push those through there, like that. Yeah, those are okay, I think. Uh, so you've got to be careful when you do this, obviously you, you, you could damage the flex, can you see the little flex ribbons there that hold these uh, 
trigger buttons on and obviously the wire for the battery the nice thing is the battery is at least modular you can just detach it here it's not soldered on so you could swap out for a replacement battery that looks like an original Sony one to me I think um, anyway the battery is still good on this as far as I can tell so what we're interested in here is getting to the analog uh, sticks here so I'm not sure what the next step is going to be we've got a screw holding it down there so I'll get that screw out we'll see I'll disconnect the battery I think first then get that screw out and see if we can just get this PCB out here but we're going to need to be mindful of the these flexible ribbons here and how they're joined up here I might have to pull the triggers off at the same time or something so I'll report back in a minute yeah so as thought it's like I say it's all one piece like that. everything's joined up so I'll just move that out of the way um, so on the start button it's going to need to clean up it's the same as many of the controllers here where you know you can see how shiny those are they're well used so yeah just some IP on a cotton bud uh, rub surfaces on those it's the, it was the start button that was having the most problems with so and the same thing on here cotton bud with IPA just wipe over there I'll show you that briefly um, but what we need to do is try and work out how Let's see if we just pull these caps off first of all. Yeah, so those are modular, just the same as the 360. I think they're interchangeable from what I've read. Um, I heard someone saying they put 360 uh, nubs on their PS3 controller. Um, I'm not sure whether that's true or not, but we'll, yeah, we can have a look perhaps. I've probably got some spare 360 ones somewhere to compare. Um, but the main thing is now I can get access to the uh, analog sticks here, dissolve them and uh, swap them out. There are these plastic guides, can you see here, on either side. So I might have to, you can see on this side here, you can see it's clipped through. So I might have to just help assist these little things here, at the same time as pulling them from this side to remove them, in order I can access the solder contacts there. But it should be straightforward to do this, I think. So I thought I'd show you how easy this is to remove these. You just put a screwdriver on there, just push it, you can see it's just fallen off. So yeah, um, dead easy to, to get those off. Uh, now we can just simply desolder, desolder these. And I guess before we do that, it makes sense to compare the replacements we have here, just to make sure that these are going to be fit for purpose really. They look a bit bigger, can you see that? That's not going to fit. So yes, uh, my bad. Um, see it's got four connections here. If you look on the PCB, uh, I shouldn't be doing this on the carpet, and I don't like these things flailing around here because I'm going to damage it. But you can see there, I've got three, three connections. So if you're doing this uh, repair yourself, just make sure you get in the three-pin version rather than the four-pin. You know, whichever you need. If you've got four pins there, obviously, order the four-pin version. But there's value in taking your controller to bits before you order sticks like I've done, just to make sure you get the right ones. Um, as far as I was, uh, you know, I just assumed that they were the same throughout all the official um, Sony models here but they seem to vary um, so I've ordered a couple of the three pin versions those should arrive later so whilst I'm waiting for those thumbsticks to arrive I may as well do the other things I need to do which you know cleaning these connections up here and then I'll also take out these silicons and the buttons and things and clean up the, the plastic parts of the control because you can you see here well, look how dirty that is it's like uh, ugh, it's disgusting um, probably every <laughs> type of bacteria you can imagine uh, cl climbing around inside those gaps at the moment so yeah I'll get them all into the sink the plastic parts and give them all a good wash but this is all you need to do you don't need to spend ages rubbing over these or anything you don't want to rub too much of the stuff off there you know it's a conductive like carbon type um, surface they have but it's just a case of just smoothing them down and then the same thing on this side here I'm not sure if those are carbon strips they look like they probably are actually just lightly don't doesn't need much really so while I'm waiting for those replacement sticks I thought we'll just get a bit of uh, grease or oil or something I'm just using oil these are gonna get swapped out anyway but if you were to get a tiny bit of grease uh, or oil into there that can actually make them start to self center again it's moving now there was a lot of uh, it was sticky you know sticking before that was the problem so, I mean, that might actually solve my problem. We'll, we'll give it a try anyway. I've ordered some of these. We can swap them out. Now, you can see it's still not quite self-centering. So it goes to the left a little bit. But this controller does work. Well, it will do when, when I've fixed the start button. Hopefully cleaning the contacts up there might have solved that. But uh, I figure we can do two things in, in one in this video. Just to see what difference that makes. 
um, see if it's any better and then ultimately swap these out so just drying the bits off here they've had a good wash the interesting thing with this I'll just show you I'm just going to move the camera if I just uh, put this up to the light can you see it's transparent it's actually transparent like smoked black plastic rather than solid which is super deceptive because when it's on there like that it just looks like a solid black but actually it's not it's actually transparent you can just about see through it there actually in the light so the other thing I'm going to need to do here is super glue these bits back on. Can you see how fragile, uh, you know, the really fragile bits of plastic? And I think uh, they were, I don't know which way around that goes now, but one of them's come from here, from this side, and I think the other one has just broken off this side. It's probably from impact damage. I think they've been dropped and a bit's fractured off the edge there. It might clip in. I don't know. It looks like it's broken off. Maybe it just clips in. Maybe I'm imagining things here. Yeah, I'm talking rubbish. These just slide in. They haven't broken off at all. Uh, it, it could give you that impression. You know, when you see this bit of plastic fall off, you're like, oh my god, something's broken there. But uh, they do actually just slide back into the little slots there, as you can see. So the nice thing with the buttons is you can't get them the wrong way around. Can you see the keyed? If you look around, you can see the little bits of plastic that stick out. Um, and they're unique to each button so you can only put the right button into the right uh, slot there so as long as you know one of them which I did the, you know the X down here and I think I the square the other ones are super easy to you know put in there and obviously it aligns them the, the right way up as you can see as well that's cool so this little plastic light pipe can you see you got the little uh, clear bits there that stick out protrude that obviously just goes um, into these little slots there, like that. And the PlayStation button here, it's got a little notch on the top there that corresponds with a smaller slot there. So you can only put that in one way around as well. Like that. Uh, and then you've got this little ring thing here that's got, um, again, a smaller notch at the top, a large notch at the bottom, which corresponds with the two slots there. And it goes that way so you know the, the bits of plastic are protruding upwards um, yeah like that so I can put uh, the button back there that's that bit done you can see there how the light shines through that little bit of silicon there to illuminate the inside of the uh, the button So the mystery, <laughs> so the mystery at this stage is, and I don't remember seeing this when I took it off, but this goes somewhere. It's got three prongs there as if it's to hold something down. I'm not really sure where that would go actually, so I'm going to need to rewind a bit and see if I can work out where that goes. So strictly speaking I should remove the plastic parts of the buttons here, but I'm just going to cheat a little bit and just use the wife's toothbrush here uh, just to carefully clean these in situ. I am of course uh, kidding. This is my wife's toothbrush. So there are a few parts here that have driven me nuts actually. Uh, I couldn't find any guides at all anywhere that showed where to put them. The first one is this little bit of plastic and I was like where the hell does that come from? And I think it goes over there. Uh, and that switch corresponds to this hole here, so I'm guessing that's like a you know you can stick a pin through there or something to reset the controller or something. I think it goes that way around. It could, in theory, go the other way around. So I'll I'm not sure, actually. Um, could go either way. Um, we'll tell. You know, be able to tell when I put the lid back on whether it fits or not. Uh, and then the other mysterious thing is this little three-legged piece of plastic here. Now at the moment. I'm not sure where this goes at all. I've searched everywhere. I've searched high and low. Yeah, so this mysterious piece of plastic here, I think it goes there. Now, it could go a different way around. You can see we've got a slot here. So there's a few different ways that could sit. Uh, and then I think this just goes over the top of that. And I think we're ready to reassemble. So on a difficulty scale of 1 to 10, I would actually rate this in an 11 actually, the, the, what these things. By the time you finish messing with one of these, you will want to jump up and down and stamp on it. It will annoy you that much. Uh, so uh, the, the best way I found of doing this is to slide these bits in first here. Um, you've got to be mindful of the buttons. You know, make sure your your buttons are okay. You know, because th that button there, the PlayStation button, can jam if you're not careful. You can get it around the wrong way just from manipulating the board and stuff. Um, once these are in position here like that, 
you know you definitely you know you've definitely got it in the slot I think that was in the slot then put your screw in uh, and then what you can do is just try and ease these buttons in here through this gap and it does take a bit of messing around make sure you've got the, the little silicon part there slid down to the right bit because those can shift around if you're not careful um, and then get your one button which I've just dropped um, and stick one corner in first like that if you can Hang on. you've got to try and massage it a bit so it's at a funny angle like that and then just try and squeeze this one into the other side can you see that it's gone back in um, and then just test it's actually working you're aligned properly um, and then this mysterious bit that I found earlier these go with the little long bits into the little gap there so that it looks like that you can see it's wobbly it moves around a bit and what you've got to do is when you put the top half of the case on um, it will slide down the little things there you can see you can see the little slots here those will correspond um, with the grooves there and you've got to do it on both sides at the same time it's an absolute <laughs> to do it properly so one of the final things reassembling here just get this uh, little thing on this way around can you see the gap at the top there it goes that way um, otherwise you can break the thing off and I did that actually I've not shown it I broke the reset switch off so I've soldered it back on I had to scratch a bit of the um, uh, ground connection here to extend it and then put a little wire up there but be very careful because if you get that around the wrong way you can break that off um, it takes a very little effort uh, and then just make sure you've got these plastic bits back on here to support the battery get your battery back on and then just slide the uh, back on onto the device and then screw it back together you can see it's, it's a bit of an art there to get that there that's it I'm done. I was going to say there's a bit of an art to get that in the right place it can fall back out those little wire bits can fall back out if you're not careful so after reassembling there, uh, bear in mind I swapped the caps, you know, the key, the, the, the caps here that on the top. Um, you can still see, it still doesn't self-centre quite uh, properly, but they're not sticking. So that oil actually uh, solved that problem. And actually this does work perfectly now. The cleaning up the contacts with a bit of IPA there on the start button, yeah, that works. No problems at all. The, control, uh, the controller works uh, super well, but you can just see it's just, you know, it does stick a little bit, I guess, on there. But that's the spring. The springs inside are just worn. That is the problem. So I will swap out the sticks uh, now. I'm not going to show you the teardown and reassembly again because you've just seen that. Um, but we'll just swap out the actual sticks themselves. We've got the replacements here. Uh, and you can see yeah, these ones hopefully should be right now. They've got three contacts on each uh, potentiometer there. So I've got the solder iron warmed up here just to clean the tip. And uh, we'll just add a little bit of solder to these contacts first. Hopefully that's uh, still in shot there. Yeah, a bit of solder containing flux. Some of these are going to absorb more heat than others. Um, let's try to see where the connections are. Yeah, there's four there, isn't there? The switch, the button, downwards click action there. Yeah, those anchor points, I think, are connected to uh, the common ground, so that they'll absorb an awful lot of heat. But all we need to do is just, uh, I'll start, just turn you around a little bit. There, so you get a slightly better angle, I think, hopefully. Um, and we'll just heat one of these up and just use the dissolved pump there. There you go, you can see that's that's pretty clear. Um, and just go around and do that for all of the connections. Some of these are going to be easier than others. These ones on the switch here will be super easy compared to the corner points. And if you struggle, just add a bit more solder and flux. And here for a little bit longer. Shown all this before, I covered it on the Xbox 360 um, video I did. I think I did a similar thing there where I swapped uh, the thing, you know, swapped the sticks out. Just be careful because you do get, as you can see, little bits of solder. So brush this down uh, with a brush afterwards. Uh, and just inspect with a magnifying glass before you test it and stuff later. Um, we'll do one of those corner points now. They're, like I say, going to absorb an awful lot more. Heat, so you might need to keep the iron there for a good three or four, five seconds, or even longer, depending on your iron. So that's pulled some of the solder off, but not all of it. So the other thing I've had to do here, you can see we've got some uh, mucky uh, flux on here at the moment, but some flux, and just use some desolder braid, because even though. Uh, I ended up having to use the um, 
desolder station here to remove the solder on the anchor points on the corners, you know, the, the larger pads there, because they were absorbing an awful lot of heat. It still wasn't removing all of the solder. Um, so yeah, just added a bit of flux around there, and let's say using some desolder braid with a higher temperature iron, uh, and that's removed all of the solder from there. I'll clean that up now with some IPA and cotton buds, and I'll just give you a close up before we actually pull it off there. Um, I need to do it anyway, just because you can't really see everything clearly because of the flux. So not super clean there, but I've just given that a gentle wipe, you still see a bit of flux there actually. But can you see, um, the solder is mostly removed I think. I just need to inspect the magnifier around here because I'm not entirely sure from the viewfinder angle there, but I think most of the solder's off there. I might need to revisit one or two of these, the ones that are here on the switch as well, I'm not sure. So the next thing to do, once you're sure you've removed most of the solder, is actually to grab these and just give them a gentle wobble in either direction. When you've got three or more in a, or two or more in a row like that, just give them a bit of a pivot, you know, hold a couple of them at a time, and you can hear them snap off, and any that um, aren't moving, you know, and you wiggle them, because bear in mind, this is, this is getting, going in the bin, this, when it comes off, so as long as you don't damage the board, this is absolutely the best technique to make sure they're snapped off um, yeah, if you can't wiggle them, you know, if you can't, if you don't see any movement when you do that, you don't hear a snap. Um, Reinspect. Just make sure you have removed all the solder, and just keep keep at this technique, really. So I think that should be it now. They do look pretty free. That one there is not great, but the pin is wiggling. Um, all the solder's off as far as I can see. So I'll just get a flat blade on the other side here, just perhaps uh, in the edge. I can show you just in the edge here and um, we'll just see if we can just gently lever it up a little bit so this has not been easy at all actually and you can see what's happened I managed to get the uh, main part of the stick off here just by gradually just not not levering it but just getting that under there and just and then trying to rock it back and forwards so even have the the uh, things across here like their suppliers and just gently try and wiggle it one way or the other just lightly and eventually this part's come off and you can see it separate from here which shows that the three solder points on those despite the fact they look super free on this side they're not free so uh, just bear in mind you know you'll have to be patient take your time and use extra heat on the the connections there which is not what I expected usually it's the anchor points on here that uh, are the sticking points but in this case no it's not on this it's these uh, three the three pins on the pots there. So I mean the easy way to remove those now is just to heat, you know, put a solder across all three of those heat and just pull from the other side and that should come off and clean the contacts up and uh, get the new stick on there. So I've seated the uh, new thumbstick in the right position there. They don't seem to fit quite as flat. Can you see like this one's totally uh, flat with the board there and they, they, they stand off a little bit. And it doesn't matter how hard you press it, you can't get it to go any lower down than that. But if you look at the height of the um, the, the stick part here, the, the grey bit, these are just ever so slightly longer than the others by about, I don't know, half a millimetre, quarter of a millimetre. So it might be okay, I don't know, I'm a bit nervous about this actually, I don't know whether that's going to be uh, standing too tall. But I've took it off and inspected it a few times and it doesn't matter how you put it on there, it won't go any flatter than that. So again, I've shown this before in other videos, but what we'll do is just solder uh, to cut two of the anchor points here, one on, uh, you know, diagonally opposite each other, um, and then inspect it, make sure it's totally straight before we commit to soldering all of the other points there. Something interesting worth pointing out, can you see down here it says LED and you've got two copper contacts on the board there. And if you look at the inside of the control here, you've got like a little light pipe here, you know, that's designed to pass light through to the PlayStation uh, logo button on the front there, so that should illuminate. But there's no LED mounted on there, so it seems like an afterthought or something, well an afterthought, but they designed originally a little place to have an LED on there. You could probably fit one on there, I'm not sure what, uh, you know, when it would light up. Uh, I might have a go at that at some point actually, but that's going to be a, a you know a later video I think if I do that. So both sticks have been replaced, just using a cotton bud with some IPA here now, um, and uh, you should see hopefully this should come up good as new. I'll just inspect it with a magnifier afterwards and uh, give it a brush down just to make sure there's no particles of solder. So the next thing I'm going to do is fit this stand. Um, 
it looks like, if I just disconnect the power and the HDMI, uh, it looks like you have to take out the little hard drive cover thing here. Is that a little rubber bung? I think it is. And I think it screws into there, so I'll report back in a minute and just show you it stood on its side. So in the stand uh, box here, what have we got? Just the stand, I think, and perhaps a screw or something, I'm not sure. Let's take that out. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I wonder how much those retailed for back uh, when they were sold. This cost me about £2, I think, which is pretty good, isn't it? It's got the official Sony uh, mark and everything on it. The box looks genuine, so I think it's a genuine product. There's no reason to believe someone would fake something like this, certainly when it's only £2. So if you've never been inside one of these before, that bung just comes off like that. There, just pull it out, and then this just needs to align up the right way round, I'm guessing. This little bit of support's under there. Uh, and then the, obviously this goes with the direction of the case there probably fits like that and then you just need to you know flat blade screwdriver just to screw this in so I'll do that and then I'll show it you when it's stood up right and there we go very nice I like that um, so it just gives it a bit more stability so it can't just easily tip over um, it'd be better if it was more you know rect uh, rectangular you know came out like this or something then it would be more stable but I can't imagine that's going to get knocked over uh, by the cats and things now when I have that in the front room just under my desk there. So a quick look at the other PlayStation controller I've been using here. Um, this one's DualShock, as you can see it says there, DualShock 3, 6-axis. So the thing that puzzles me is this one's only just 6-axis. Why on earth would they create a model that's not got force feedback? Uh, I'm not sure. I did wonder if it was something to do with additional sensors being in this particular model that the force feedback might interfere with, but I don't think so. Um, because I think both of these, I've played um, Last of Us both of these, and you can tilt, you know, the thing, um, and it detects that tilt when you tilt the thing, um, regardless of whether you've got the uh, the dual shock or not. So, yeah, post in the comments down below. Do you think it was just a cost cutting thing exercise? You know, did they originally ship without the dual shock, or did they ship with the dual shock package with the PS3? No idea. So I've got the PS3 set up in the uh, conservatory here. Uh, I've been using this on my main uh, monitor actually, that, you know, when the PC and stuff's connected and the Amiga and the ST. Yeah. Um, I've been using it on the, that screen because it's 3D in the other room, so you know, there's a few, quite a few games you can play in 3D on the PlayStation 3. So uh, we'll press the start button now. Bear in mind, start wasn't working before. So start's now working. Uh, up, down on the D-pad, yeah, that's working. Let's hit X load my save there so hopefully this is going to be alright, I mean you can see, can you see how straight the sticks are now they were crooked before, they didn't self sense properly um, and I've got new caps on there as well it would be interesting to later stick that little LED in there just to see you know what point that lights up, is it on all the time, does it only light when you press it um, or when you get a notification or something, I don't know, I'd be interested Post down in the comments below if you know more about the LED capability of these. There we go, so it's loaded. Um, it's only in 1080i this, let me just turn it down a bit. Yeah, a whole mess of them. It's way too loud. Um, but even in 1080i, wow, that looks absolutely fantastic considering it's not current gen. So yeah, left analog stick, I can steer around there, move around. Uh, let's try the right one. Yeah, so we've got both axes is there. Let's get off the horse with the triangle button. Yeah, um, LB gets your weapon out. Is it L1? Yeah, L1 rather. R1 should fire. Yeah, left trigger should run. So if we walk and then left trigger, let's try that again. Yeah, it speeds up. So the left trigger's working. Let's try the right trigger. Yeah, it crouches and uh, does the stealth thing. Um, circle button. Yeah, that's just a crouch. X we know works, yeah that's from LA which is the square button so yeah what appears everything's working, just press select yeah that's working and the home button sorted anyway I thought you found that interesting thanks for watching I'll see you soon